Hey everybody, welcome back to Fairwinds RV. Again, my name is Jeremy, and today I wanna to take just a few minutes and show you guys some data that I collected when I first installed my MicroAir Easy Start systems in my air conditioning units in my RV. Now, if you're not familiar with what these little units do, uh, basically what they do is they limit the amount of surge power that your AC units draw when you first start them up. That surge power comes from when the compressor kicks on and the power that it can draw can be three or four times the amount of power that it normally draws. Now, the reason this can be important to you is because if you are the type of RVer that does uh, boondocking or is in a situation that you know has uh, limited electrical power available to you, having the ability to start an AC unit on a portable generator can be the difference between a good camping experience and a really bad one. So what I'm not gonna cover today is I am not gonna cover the installation of these products. There are several great videos out there already that exist on YouTube on how to install these in your air conditioner units. Um, so I'm not gonna do that today, but I will put a link below to one of the better videos that I found. But I still recommend watching this video all the way through so that you can see how efficient these things really are um, and maybe it'll help you decide whether or not you even need to spend the money on one of these because they're not exactly cheap so again uh, we're gonna take a look at some data uh, we're gonna take a look at the data before I installed these and then we're gonna take a look at the data after I installed them we're gonna compare the two and we're gonna see just how efficient they really are so let's get started and dive into the data all right so let's take a look at the data that I captured um, during this test so basically I captured two sets of data, well, two sets of data per air conditioning unit. So I have the pre-installation data and I have the post-installation data. And again, I have two units. The one in the bedroom is slightly smaller uh, than the one for the kitchen and the living room. So I think we'll see that a little bit in the numbers as we go through it. And I took a total of five different readings. So the first reading that I took um, labeled pre-start up here I took this one because this I needed to establish a sort of a baseline reading uh, because I took my data from the line side of the main breaker inside of my RV. So obviously there was some load already on that line. So I wanted to record it, even though it wasn't much, I wanted to record it and account for that, uh, that load. All right, then when I started up uh, my AC units, I, I took four different readings. So the first one was the fan startup, which uh, is basically the surge current from the fan starting up. The second one was once that surge current from the fan subsided, right? This is the current that was left over. So basically the running amps of that fan. The next one was the compressor startup. And so this is basically all of this together. Um, when that compressor started up, this was the highest value that my meter recorded. And then once the surge subsided from the compressor, all right, this is what's left over. And so this is the AC unit fully running and then um, any other loads that were running on that line prior to me running this test. So basically what I'm saying here is I had about 13 and a half amps on that line with that uh, AC unit running, but I had a, about 0.4 amps already there. So uh, this, this AC unit was drawing on this run about 13.1 amps. Okay, so then I basically just duplicated this test over and over again. So the first one was for this zone one pre-installation. Then I did the same thing for zone two. And then I just duplicated that, that same set of tests for my post-installation data. And again, I just wanna reiterate here that these tests were all run under very similar conditions, meaning um, inside temperature, outside temperature, and my humidities, uh, my humidity levels were all the same when I conducted these tests. All right, so basically these four lines here, uh, for each of these data sets uh, was the raw data. And then again, I just averaged those out uh, to make this, uh, this data, I think, just a little bit more useful. Okay, so now this is really where we get into the meat of it that shows, um, that's gonna show us how effective these Easy Start units really are. So I, I did capture some, uh, some data here for the fans themselves. I'm not really gonna talk about them because that's not, a lot of, that's not a lot of current draw, it's not a lot of power. And in the grand scheme of things, that's not gonna overload anything. And it's not important uh, when we're talking about these easy start modules. But what we do wanna look at here is the startup locked rotor amps. And that's uh, essentially the, the surge current from the 
AC units compressor starting up. So by far, uh, for most of you out there, that's going to be the largest uh, load that you have in, in your rig is that starting surge from your AC unit. And where I got this number from here, this 30 point, this 32.05, that's basically taken from the average of all of the compressor startups. And then we are subtracting the current that was on that line just prior to that compressor startup. So we had 2.65 amps on average here before the compressor started up. And then once the compressor started up, the highest reading on average was about 34.69 amps. So if we subtract what was already there, that's what comes out and gives us this 32.05. And I realize that's um, that's a point, about 0 0.01 off, uh, but uh, the Excel sheet here that I'm using has a bunch of decimal points and it, it made some rounding for us. So my zone one compressor alone is drawing 32.05 amps on average of surge current when the compressor starts up. And then if we look at my zone two unit, it's drawing uh, almost 50 amps of surge current when that compressor starts up. And then if we convert that over to watts, uh, we're looking at about 3850 uh, on zone one and about 5950 on zone two. And now what I really want to point out here is if we, we let's talk about two different scenarios. Um, one is, you know, if you're mooch docking, you're sitting in somebody's driveway. Shitter was full! Generally, um, they don't have a dedicated RV outlet for you to plug into. Um, so you may be plugged into just a simple 20 or maybe even a 15 amp breaker when you're sitting in their driveway. Now, if I were to take this zone two AC unit and try and start it up on say a 15 or a 20 amp circuit breaker, um, generally it, it, it's going to be close whether or not that, that circuit breaker is going to stay shut or not at 50 amps. At 32 amps, you know, there's a little bit better chance that that breaker might stay closed. So that might be the one that I want to, to use. Um, but that one, you know, in my case specifically, that's my zone one, which is really just covering the bedroom. Now, yeah, all the ducting is, is connected. So I'm going to get some of that airflow in my living room. Um, but that's not really the one that I'm going to want to start up if I want to try and cool my entire rig. So that's the first scenario. If you're if you're mooch docking, then you can see how you're really going to overload a 15 or a 20 amp circuit just by starting an air conditioning unit. And then the second thing I want to talk about is a portable generator. So again, the portable generators, the way that they typically market those is if the side of it says 4,000 watts, generally what that means is that's your starting surge. So you may have 4,000 watts of starting surge, but your running surge or your running current may only be uh, about 3,500 watts. So for this zone one, if I had a 4,000 watt generator, portable generator, I, you know, I might be okay here in starting this, this AC unit. But if I look at zone two and I've got a 4,000 watt generator, you know, 4,000 watts is my, is my surge current rating, something that I should never, you know, go over or try, try not to go over with my generator. And I'm going to be putting almost 6,000 watts on that generator. Now, in reality, um, I mean, there's a good chance that that generator would hack it, but it's going to sound really terrible uh, when that st starting surge gets placed on that generator. And, you know, it might choke it and it might shut off. Uh, and then the other thing is the more you do that to your generator, um, you know, the, the shorter lifespan that it's going to have overall. So now let's take a look at the average of the post installation data. And this is where I was really surprised. If we take a look at our surge current here now for my zone one unit, my zone one unit only drew about uh, just shy of 12 amps on the surge. So basically I went from about 32 amps of surge current all the way down to about 12 amps of surge current. And then even better for my zone two unit, I went from about uh, almost 50 amps of surge current down to about uh, just, just shy of 11 amps of surge current. So when you're talking about being on a you know 15 or 20 amp circuit when you're mooch docking off of someone this easy start module is definitely going to allow you to start up at least one of your ac units on that limited electrical power supply and then if we're talking about you know a generator generators usually uh, braided in watts for my zone one that 11.81 amps converts over to about 1400 watts and then that 10.74 is about just shy of 1300 watts. So, you know, if I had a, say, a 2000 watt 
um, generator or even a 1500 watt generator, I would probably be safe to start one of these AC units on that portable generator. All right, so the whole goal here was to see how effective these easy start units are. Now you can see my zone one was the surge current was decreased by about 63%. And if we look at zone two, that one was decreased by about 78%. Now MicroAir's website says that these units will decrease your starting surge by 65 to 75 percent so i guess i would rate these as probably zero pinocchios because that's pretty accurate according to the data that i got all right guys so as you can see from the data here if you are going to be connected to a you know a limited source of electrical power such as moose docking in a friend's driveway or even boondocking on a portable generator or even a solar setup then you can see how effective these easy start modules really are. So if mooch docking or boondocking is in your RV future, you know, I would say that these easy start modules are kind of a no brainer uh, to make sure that you're able to run an air conditioning unit while you're out there. All right guys, so I think that's gonna be it for this video. Um, again, the purpose here was not to show the installation or talk about the installation or anything like that. Again, there's lots of videos out there. I'm gonna put a link down below, uh, but the purpose was really to uh, provide some raw data for you so that you could really see for yourself um, how effective or how efficient these modules really are. And of course, hopefully this information um, is beneficial to you to help you make the decision whether or not you need these modules for your air conditioning units. All right, guys, uh, so the last thing here is if you like this video, uh, please make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and we will see you on the next video.